In 2022, we saw an absolute roller coaster ride take place for GPU prices, where we saw at the start of 2022, there was RTX 3080s going for well over $2,000 still, and then going towards the end of the year, we saw these prices drop down, especially on the used market, for under $500. Here at Tech Yes City, I definitely wasted no time in snapping up bargains all at the end of last year. And going into 2023, we're starting to see that supply of GPUs, especially on RTX 3000 series cards like 3080s and 3090s, are starting to go out of stock at a lot of retailers. Meaning when Nvidia last August announced to shareholders that they were reducing the sell-in, aka reducing the supply that they were bringing to market with RTX 3000 silicon, they weren't lying. They were doing this to control the prices and essentially keep them elevated to an equilibrium price that would give them the best profit. And now all these months have passed and we've just got news that lo and behold, AMD is doing the exact same thing. <laughs> where AMD's CEO Lisa Su in an investor relations meeting basically admitted to doing the exact same thing in the last two quarters of 2022 that Nvidia was doing as well. And that is reducing the supply that they're bringing to market for consumer grade CPU and GPU products. So what does all this mean if you're an avid PC gamer or a tech enthusiast in 2023? Well, short answer, AMD and Nvidia, they don't care about you. The long answer, let's get into it. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SED Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon, BFTYC. Links in description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and let's talk about less of these graphics cards coming to the market in 2023 and already being reduced in 2022 and why companies like AMD and Nvidia do this. And the bottom line is simply profit. They want to maximize the most profit possible for the amount of products sold. Now let's break it down with an example of say an RTX 3080 for one quarter. Say Nvidia has the capability to produce a million RTX 3080s in this time, but if they decide to produce a million of these RTX 3080s and the demand isn't there at a particular price point, then they'll have to reduce that price because they'll have all this stock on hand that will be depreciating in value. But also over time, there may be newer products that come out that are basically usurping this product in terms of better price performance. So in other words, Nvidia doesn't want to be left with stock on hand that they could otherwise sell. So how they counteract this is they forecast demand. And now coming in to the second half of 2022, we saw gaming graphics card demand fall off a cliff. And this was mainly because cryptocurrency miners were buying up all these graphics cards and using them as simply a financial instrument to make money, leaving the average gamer priced out of the market in general. However, in the latter half of 2022, we saw the gaming graphics card get back to the market that it was intended for, and that is the gamer. And so with this massive sudden reduction in demand, AMD and Nvidia suddenly found themselves in a market that was much trickier to navigate, not only because of this reduced demand, but also because of the macroeconomic environment they found themselves in with central banks worldwide starting to tighten monetary policy as well as raising interest rates. This left these companies in one of the worst case scenarios. So now back to this RTX 3080 example here with 1 million units. If it costs a board partner, and I am going to put emphasis on a board partner here because they do the majority of sales for Nvidia's graphics cards. And so if it costs a board partner $500, say for instance, to produce, an RTX 3080, then that's going to be considered their floor price. They are not going to want to keep producing these graphics cards if the price of the card and what people are prepared to pay for it falls under that $500. However, when it comes to consumer behavior, there's always going to be particular consumers that will perceive the value of an RTX 3080 higher than that price. And then there'll be particular consumers 
that perceive that value lower than that particular price. However, in this case of the RTX 3080, it's in Nvidia's best interest to find that point of where they can extract the maximum profit for their production capabilities and the costs, factoring in also the add-in board partners who are ultimately selling the product to the end consumer. So now in the first and second quarters of 2022, there would have been 1 million customers, say for instance, at $1,000, ready to buy up all these RTX 3080s. So not only were Nvidia happy to ship as many units as possible, but the add-in board partners were just as happy to accept many of these cards from Nvidia as possible and then package them up and sell them to the public and make as much profit as they possibly could. However, going into these later two second quarters, we now see demand from crypto miners has pretty much just completely vanished. And so we're left with just the gamer. And now suddenly there is not a million buyers ready to pay $1,000 for the RTX 3080. In fact, there may not even be 100,000 buyers prepared to pay that $1,000 for an RTX 3080. And so when the gamers aren't prepared to pay as much as the miner, Nvidia and also AMD with their graphics cards, they have to find a new point at which they can maximize their producer surplus. And so this, ladies and gentlemen, is called allocative efficiency. And here's where we go back to this example yet again, where we've got now a million buyers only prepared to pay $600 versus that original $1,000. And remember, it costs the AIBs, say $500 to get this to market. That leaves us with only $100 profit from the producer's side of things. Now, if we go back to what the consumer is prepared to pay, there may be 500,000 buyers prepared to pay $800 for the RTX 3080. And so now this leaves overall a bigger profit for the producer in question. And so they want to find that level to essentially maximize the profit versus what they can allocate. So allocative efficiency in a nutshell explains what AMD and Nvidia are doing to the GPU market at this very important time. They're reducing supply to that level that they forecast is going to be the most profitable for them. And now with AMD coming out and saying that they're doing the exact same thing that Nvidia was doing in the same period is nothing new to my ears. These are companies that are in this for profit first. They're not your friends. And I've been saying this for years at Tech Yes City. However, going forward, and I've been stressing this a lot at Tech Yes City, the macroeconomic environment that Nvidia and AMD and also Intel is faced with is going to push them into a new spot where they're going to have to sacrifice some, if not a lot of their profit margins, because simply we are going into an era where money is getting tighter and economic conditions are becoming even more constrained than they've ever been in, I would say, our lifetimes. And to mix in some economic data, which you guys are starting to love around Tech Yes City, with what we're seeing in the tech space from the Federal Reserve is showing that real disposable income levels have fallen the worst since the Great Depression. In other words, the amount of money that the average person is taking home and what they can really purchase with that income is going down at the worst rate since we saw nearly 100 years ago with the Great Depression. In other words, the average consumer is getting poorer very fast and so when they do that they tend to weigh up with more emphasis what are they getting for their money but furthermore they either reduce their spending or they reduce the tier of product that they're buying and that last part that we talked about there reducing the tier of the product that they're buying this relates perfectly to graphics cards now coming into 2023 i do think things are going to get a lot worse in a macroeconomic sense in that shipments for these products are at the lowest they've been in quite some time for cpu and gpu sales but also the interest rates are the highest they've ever been in the last 10 years coupled in with the fact that the average amount of debt per capita or per person is the highest it's ever been ever in the history of this debt-based economy so what we've got here is a recipe for real disposable income to drop even further, but also demand for these exotic products like a gaming graphics card will also drop off. And I believe when this demand drops off, 
prices will naturally drop off too. Even though AMD and Nvidia can try and cut the supply all they want, I believe going back to that first example that we gave with the allocative efficiency, I believe that they've forecasted this incorrectly and the consumer, especially when money gets tight, they're not as stupid as companies may be put them out to be. And basically something I'm going to say in today's video and you saying is when money gets tighter, it also gets smarter. And so what this means is the consumer is going to be looking anywhere they can for the best value possible going forward. And the pressures of these higher interest rates will sooner or later start to eat into AMD, Intel, and Nvidia, and it's going to force them to be more competitive than they've ever been. So they can reduce the supply all they want, but that's only going to give the competitor a chance to play catch up and get sales. And if we look at this case in the GPU market, surprisingly, it looks like Intel is starting to make a bit of a blast with their $250 announcement recently of their Arc A750. Now I'm gonna try and get my hands on one of these cards, run some benchmarks coupled in with the performance gains that Intel have also seen. This could be a great option for a lot of people who wanna buy a new card and get really good value. Because if this thing outperforms, say for instance an RX 6600, and it gets closer to higher tier models from both AMD and Nvidia, this could be a really good thing going forward into 2023. So if AMD and Nvidia wanna reduce supply and Intel wants to take up that offer by delivering that supply at lower margins to the market, then they will surely be rewarded by the smarter money that's circulating in 2023. So in a nutshell, for new PC parts for 2023, I'm expecting competition to ramp up harder than it's ever been, at least in the last few years. And with that, that's going to ultimately mean better prices for you, the end consumer. And this is also tying in with the fact that these macroeconomic forces are going to force these companies to do just that. Now, when it comes to the used market, people always want an update on what's going on in the used market. I'm seeing here that basically AMD and Nvidia with their reduced supply attitudes has basically thrown a bone to the used sellers, especially the crypto miners that are selling off their older stock. They've basically been given a blessing from Nvidia and AMD where they can now charge higher prices because there's less supply of RTX 3080s and 3070s going around. And so that means they can just get more money for them. When I was back in Australia, I saw prices were pretty decent for used graphics cards. But what I also noticed is when I went to pick up a lot of these graphics cards, they were from crypto miners, but also the crypto miners had actually quite a few of these GPUs in stock at their place. And I asked them, do you want to get rid of them? for lower prices and they said, no, I'm just happy to sit on them and let them sell at the higher prices. And so Nvidia and AMD have given these sellers no incentive to sell their products at lower prices and quicker where they can just now sit on them and command higher prices. So basically Nvidia and AMD, they've thrown the used crypto miners a bone here and allowed them to claw back more money on their parts simply because they're asking in turn higher prices on their GPUs from the new market. But ultimately AMD and Nvidia, when that crypto miner sells that card for that higher price, that's that higher tier customer that could have bought your product brand new off the shelves. And you've essentially lost that customer to the used market. Now, in terms of the used market going forward, I believe prices will continue to come down depending on the product. And what I've noticed personally is there's waves of products, whether it's CPUs or GPUs, there's going to be particular items that are on the used market that are coming up really cheap. And I find as a bit of a heads up, it's usually those products that are selling well on the new market that are available on the used market. Take for instance, in Japan here, the RTX 3060 Ti, that's selling well on the new market. So when I do my parts hunt, I'm gonna be on the lookout for bargains on used 3060 Ti's. And so when we look at an RTX 3080, however, they're currently running out of stock in Australia, Japan, and the US. So I expect those prices to be elevated on the used market. And that's exactly what I was finding in Australia 
when I was there doing my used parts hunts. But all those questions will be answered. And also I am finding some more disturbing news uh, relating to GPUs, which I'll be talking about in a live stream on Monday. So if you guys want to see that the moment it drops, be sure to hit that sub button and ring that bell. And also if you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to hit that like button for us. And if you have any questions or comments, be sure to drop them down below, just like this question of the day here, which comes from Billy Briscoe Jr. And they say, excellent tutorial. I have Windows 10 Pro that I purchased can I use the product key from that? And now when it comes to a Windows 10 product key license, the worst harm that can come is that you try that key and it just doesn't work. So if you've got the key and you've got an unactivated Windows message popping up on your screen, then just give it a try. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it works, then you've saved yourself some money. Anyhow, guys, hope that answers that question and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.